to it. All right, give thanks for this Sunday morning, this beautiful Sunday morning, uh, for us being able to come together as light minds with the intention of raising our frequency towards the remembrance of our divinity, the remembrance of God, uh, the remembrance of life, the remembrance of our purpose here as living, breathing, divine beings. We give thanks for that privilege. We give thanks for all of our unique journeys. We give thanks for the path that has been laid out for us. We speak that we will continue to walk with a light heart and an open mind so that we can be divinely guided and take advantage of divine protection and divine providence. And as we're on this journey, we give thanks for all of the experiences that we have to be able to see God, feel God, uh, be God, reflect as God. We give thanks for all of those experiences, not discrediting in any way, shape, and form the truth, the reality that God is God, and there's nothing other than that, that reality. We give thanks. We give thanks for the non-separation, the non-disconnection, the reality that we are never disconnected. We are never disconnected. We are one with it. It reflects in us. It, it expresses itself through us and as us, and we give thanks. Ashe, 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 oh, amen. I mean, we give thanks. Man, listen. The more you get to know God, the more you really understand it. And I, I, I wanted to share this. I um, posted something, uh, a page out of a book I'm reading on Facebook. And uh, someone commented and they asked, what God is this book, this, this book referencing? And uh, my response was, you know, there's only one God. And you know, we went, we had an exchange. It was a pleasant exchange. exchange. Uh, I didn't necessarily know the intention or the angle, but I didn't have to know. My, I, I said a prayer over the exchange because I don't take the exchanges lightly and I'm never anywhere to argue. I, I prefer to exchange and or teach. Um, and so I wanted to exchange, you know, because I thought it was a great question. I think, um, because we have been confound, confined, I'm sorry, we have been confined in one book for the most part when it comes to religion in the Western world, and that's usually the Bible. Um, when you come outside of that text, you know, there's a level of protection that many take, a defense, I should say, that many take um, to make sure we ain't, we ain't, you know, entertaining no foolishness basically <laughs> it's like well what god is that you know uh and and so i you know i answered there's only one god and and the sister said well you know the bible said there are many gods um the bible references many gods and i said well this is true um however if you look in the bible you see capital g god and you see lowercase g god and the capital g represents God, the true and living, ever living God, you know, and the lowercase gods is that what we is that which we make our gods, you know, that which we uh, like our jobs and sometimes our children, our mates. Okay, I ain't tell y'all to put on no um, boots this morning, but I don't know, there may be a necessity, but anyway. <laughs> We make these things our gods, you know, the, 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 uh, our passions, our uh, convictions, our goals, these things become our God. Um, nonetheless, we continue. And she began to emphasize uh, the importance or her perceived or uh, what she feel is important. And she said, uh, you know, and I'm saying it in a paraphrased and maybe a kinder way. She said, you know, um, we're the only culture that don't show, put respect on God's name, basically. Again, I'm paraphrasing. These are my words <laughs> that's translating hers. We don't put the respect on God's name. And the word says to not to use the Lord's name in vain. And we should put respect on God's name. And I told the sister, I said, I think you're you're absolutely correct. I acknowledge that there are many names. Uh, and she was emphasizing that the name of God is Yah, you know, um, which gave me the understanding of 
most likely what doctrine she's coming from. And I said, well, in your doctrine, the, the God that this book is referencing is Yah. And so she gave thanks for me answering the question. But it made me think, it made me reflect, you know, um, there are plenty names of God, you know, if you can, because of the reality of God, there are so many names, there are so many names that can be used to describe and to honor and to pay respect to this thing we call God. Um, you know, there are many in different cultures that call it by different names that mean, uh, that has a meaning that describes the various aspects of the living God. And I honor and, and respect all of them. Um, and I feel that I told her, you know, I really appreciate her emphasis on the respect, you know, showing certain sanctity for the names of God. And it just inspired me to, um, to go and delve into the, go and look at the different names and just be in praise and gratitude for the different aspects of God, which is what all of these names represent. And they call out the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the way maker, the, 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 uh, the, the most merciful, most gracious, the, the provider, the exalter, come on, somebody, the, the, uh, abaser, the, come on, I mean, come on, you know, and, you know, you have in different languages, these different names, you know, and I give thanks. I just give thanks. I just wanted to say that that came to my mind. Um, but the reason why it came to my mind is because I was saying that when you get to know God, you know, it really elevates your consciousness. It elevates your life. It really begins to put in perspective what life is all about. When you really understand God, understand your role as a child of God, as an expression of God, and uh, you begin to, to understand the privileges you have, the um, protection you have, the, and we, I'm calling it, we call it protection. We use that word protection. I, I can rock with it, but it's like the, you begin to understand the reality of your being. So some of the things that you may have held on to, some of the beliefs, some of the mindsets, some of the uh, mind habits you've had in the past begin to dissolve. It begins to clarify, begins to, to um, heal and become whole. Once you truly understand what God is, you know, what this thing we call God is. So I encourage you, continue your journey and getting to know God. And you may, some may ask, well, how do I do that? What's queen, what would you say is the best way to get to know God? I would say, first of all, your earnesty and wanting to know what, what God is. Okay. I'm just going to stand on that. Not who God is, what God is. If we're talking about a who, the only thing I could reference are, like I said, the names, the different names of God that describe the reality of God. Um, the reality of what we call God, you know, but that earnesty of wanting to get to know it, it's already setting the intention. And once you put a little attention to it, it's going to catch and begin to draw you near to those things that will help you, whether that's circumstances, situations, conversations, teachers, communities, whatever, that can help you to get to understand God. But the second thing is to, um, to lighten your heart. You know, one of the things that I think get in the way of us really getting to understand life and understanding God is the heaviness of our hearts. When you're holding on to things in this physical world, it's going to be difficult for you to get to understand and get to be able to commune with things that are not of this world. When you're so attached to the scene, it's going to be difficult for you to experience the unseen. Well, y'all with me? I just want to make sure we y'all hear me. Okay. I know somebody told me my sound is perfect, but I just want to make sure y'all hear me. All right. When we're distracted, I didn't get that. could you try again? When we're distracted by this physical world, it's going to be difficult. Sure Come on, Siri, leave me alone now. <laughs> I'm not asking you any questions. <laughs> when we, all right, I see. Yes, I hear you clear. Okay, Ashe, Ashe, I just wanted to make sure we hear. 
when you're so attached to and distracted by things of the scene, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to fully experience the things of the unseen. This is one of the reasons why I always say to myself and out loud, observe, don't absorb. Observe, don't absorb. Be in this world, not of it. To be in this world is to appreciate the world, appreciate the circumstances, situations that you're going, that you're dealing with. It's to be in a state of gratitude. To be in this world is to fully take the position of gratitude and that is all. So as you deal with circumstances, situations, peoples, and things, you're not absorbing it. You're not attaching to it. You're not making them so hardcore real. But I don't know if anyone have uh, witnessed this, have experienced this. When you strive to live like that, many will tell you you're not being realistic. You're being nonchalant. You you you're being um you're being delusional. Yeah, I hear all that spiritual stuff, but you need to be real. I am I the only one that hear these things. I don't necessarily hear it a lot in my world because I'm around a lot of like-minded beings. However, I hear a lot of people saying, this is the difficulty. Queen, I'm growing and I see what you're saying and I, I believe this and I love what you're saying and all of this, but I can't get my husband to get on board. I can't get my family to get on board. My family keep telling me, you're living in a fantasy world. I see somebody saying, you're, you, you need to get it together. <laughs> so this is why the word says, can't remember the chapter, a uh, book or the chapter, but it says three times in this book, in this chapter, it says, be of good courage, be strong and of good courage. Why does it say that? It said it three times over and over and over again. Somebody find that scripture for me. Be strong and of good courage. It goes on to keep talking, then it say it again. It goes on to keep saying it, then it say it again. <laughs> Why is it saying that like that? Because in order to walk this walk as a divine being, you must be strong, not physically strong, not strong in your human mind. Because strong don't mean, you know, I'm going to stand up for the Lord. I'm going to tell you off if you come to me and you try to tell me anything different. That's not strong. I'm st that's strong, but in this physical sense, in a spiritual strength, in a spiritual sense, strength is the ability to govern your feelings, emotions, and thoughts. That is strength. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is strength. Y'all hear me? What is strength? Strength, spiritual strength is the ability. It ain't got nothing to do with you standing up for the Lord and telling people how it is and, you know, speaking your peace and speaking your truth and all of that. That's, I'm not going against that. I'm not in particular a fan of doing it because I'm, I, I don't, I don't want to engage. I don't want my ego. Thank you, sis, for uh, this, the chapter. I don't want my ego to be a part. I don't even want to activate the ego like that. I just want to stand in what I know to be my, to be truth. So it doesn't require me to explain it to you for you to understand. It doesn't require me to do that. But what it does require me to do is govern my emotions and my thoughts as I'm dealing with you, as I'm dealing with circumstances, as I'm dealing with situations. Ashe, <clears throat> I'm just going to, Read this. This is a uh, Joshua one chapter. I mean Joshua chapter one. It says, "There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of." and of a good courage for unto this people 
Shall thy divide for an inheritance of the land? It keeps uh, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and a very, it adds, <laughs> courage, courageous. Be thou strong and very courageous. That's the second time it said it in this. It goes on to continue. Keep reading down. And you would, you know, read the entire chapter to get the full context. But it's basically saying, you know, there will be trials and tribulations and people won't be with you and it will be all type of things going on. Let me paraphrase it quickly. It's much, it's much deeper than that. So, you know, if you're one that desire to study and maybe take this as a sign of something that you would like to dig into this week, take a deep dive on Joshua 1. What, what is it talking about? What's the context of this chapter that's trying to emphasize to us that we got to be strong and of good courage? But the third one says, uh, it goes down the third time it said, it said, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. No matter what's happening, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, the, the most high is present. The reality of God is present and it's calibrated and it has a path and it's flowing and it's doing what it's doing. So whether your emotions, your human emotions is riled up to feel blowed about it, sad about it, scared about it, govern it, be strong. Govern your emotions and your thoughts. And then be courageous. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. What, why are you having to defend yourself? Are you afraid that, you know, someone who doesn't believe what you're saying is, uh, is going to make it where you're not validated? Is that the problem? Does someone come in and tell you you're in a fantasy world, makes you feel scared that you are? Does it shake up your faith? Just saying, if they come and they, well, you need it. What happened? What's happened? What happened? What happened? Because somebody said you were being delusional. So what you mad? Cause they said that cause you embarrassed is that is that what it is? You embarrassed or you want to be right? What is it? No, you don't have to be haughty. You don't have to you don't have to fuss and fight nobody. You ain't got to prove your point. You don't have to do anything. What is the pur purpose of that? Are you speaking for the almighty? Nothing speaks louder than you being in it. Nothing speaks louder than you being. You hear that? Nothing speaks louder than you being. I don't have to say, listen, I'm not going to try to convince you to lighten your heart, to let it go, to pray about it. I don't, I don't have to convince you. But if you ask me, queen, how is your light so bright? How do you stay so at peace? How does your skin glow so well? How does you find all of this? Good? How are you doing? I'm going to tell you these things. Lighten your heart. Observe, do not absorb. Do not become attached to things, people, situations, or circumstances. Be kind to yourself and to others. Be empathetic on, to yourself and for others. Release the idea, the illusion that you are in control. You're not. You're a co-creator in this process. And the only job you have or duty you have as a co-creator in the process, let's rewind, is light in your heart. <laughs> Observe, don't absorb. <laughs> Be watchful and prayerful, you know. Be watchful and contemplative. As you contemplate, activate your prayers and your, and your affirmations. Utilize your inner power, your inner being to assist in the journey, to co-create in the process. That inner journey, that inner power is your consciousness, is your thoughts, is your emotions, is your imaginative, your mind's eye. Be obedient when you're inspired to do, but do not attach to the things that you are doing. Do not attach to the things you are creating. Don't attach to them. 
use your hands when you are divinely inspired, but don't attach to the things your hands that you're doing. Don't attach to it. That's the formula. Ashe, give thanks. Give thanks for that word. It just flowed out. I came though. Give thanks. Give thanks. Ashe, I want to. I don't want to just flow into it. Give thanks for that word. Give thanks for that word. Give thanks for that word. Be strong and of good courage. We buckle and fold at any sign that what what we think, you know, we we, we fold. We gotta be stronger. And stronger don't necessarily mean, you know, you got to get the guns out. I did that on purpose. I just wanted to see y'all that I've been, I've been in the gym. No, I'm just kidding. Strong don't mean you got to put the guns out. Strong is to govern your emotions and your feel, your uh, thoughts. And as you govern them, it should not only be trying not to be negative. It should be also you being prayerful and affirmative. So that's a whole bunch of talking to yourself. You ain't got no business talk really trying to defend yourself to nobody else. The minute you begin to become defensive, you need to really turn, to turn it on yourself. And say to self, well, we're not doing this. What you getting frustrated for? What you getting angry about? What you feeling defensive about? Why, why must you be defensive about truth? If truth is truth. You think I'm going to fuss and fight with you and tell you that this color is yellow or gold? I'm not going to fuss and fight with you. No, oh, that's green. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to fight with you. Well, let me show you. No, nah, man, it's green. I don't want to fool with you no more. Huh? If you want, if it's green to you, baby, listen. This, this, is, this is your life, your world. <laughs> I'm just living in it and vice versa. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, give thanks for that word. All right. So I'm reading a, 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 a book that has been very enjoyable by all means. And um, I read something this morning <clears throat> during my meditation and, uh, and reading time this morning that I want to share. And I kind of want to focus the message uh, today. I just want to focus in. I want to say focus the message because whatever the messages are, I want to let them be what they are. But I wanted to focus in on this message because I felt like it was a powerful one. I felt like it was a powerful one. So I want to read it and then we'll talk about it. It says, one must remember <clears throat> that the goal of the active life is contemplation. One must remember that the goal of active life, life in this seen world, is contemplation. Being able to observe it and contemplate internally. It is this that remains the better part that will not be taken away. Anything of this world is perishable. As you interact with this world, in order to tap into the eternal vibration of anything in this, in this active world, in this seen world, you must go in. Because everything is purposeful, everything has its place, but in order for us to really begin to truly experience God in all, as all, truly experience God as all, not just saying it. To truly experience God as all, we must be in the world, but not of it. Be active in this physical world, but be observe, observe, to, uh, um, uh, observe be, an be an observer, pay attention, be a watchman. That's what the watchman is talking about in the Bible. Be a watchman because God is always talking to you, showing you things. God is always at work. I mean, things are always calibrating. But I'm going to go back to the first point that I made. We can become so distracted in what they're calling the active world that we're unable to see what's going on in the unseen, which, trust me, is way more interesting than what's going on in the scene. Okay? 
way more interesting. That's the eternal, eternal vibration of everything that's going on. There's something eternal behind everything. I call it the essence of the thing. I call it the depth of the thing. The thing, once it becomes matter, once it becomes a thing, that's the lowest vibration of what that is. But it always started at the highest vibration. But the only way you can do that is from this book's perspective is learn to be contemplative in life. I'm gonna continue. It says, so the toil of fasting and a city, a citus, a city, assiduous reading the works of mercy, justice, devotion, and hospitality will be taken from us and will not remain as we remain? The Abba to who, whom this person posed this question said that practice of the active life is in time. Whereas contemplative knowledge is in eternity. We are in time. We practice the active life in time, knowing that our goal is in eternity. The world, something other, the, I'm sorry, the role of the contemplative is to remind us that there is in the world something other than the world, that the goal of human life is beyond the human. Contemplation is the goal and meaning of work, just as Sabbath is the goal and meaning of the weekdays. This is what caught my attention, that last statement. Contemplation is the goal and meaning of work, just as Sabbath is the goal and meaning of the workday. I said, and I thought, I said, hmm, profound word. The whole purpose of the weekday is Sabbath. <laughs> the whole purpose of everything that the Most High created in the story, in the creation story, on all them days, the whole purpose of it was that day that it, that, 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 the day of rest. Why? What goes on in rest? What goes on in Sabbath? Remember the metaphysical meaning of Sabbath. Okay, let us remember the metaphysical meaning of Sabbath. We've gone over that one Sunday, but let me read that to you. The, def the metaphysical meaning of Sabbath. It says the Sabbath is the consciousness that we have fulfilled the divine law in both thought and act. The Sabbath of the Lord has nothing to do with any day of the week. God did not make days and weeks, nor has he darkened his clear concepts of truth by the time element. Time is an invention of the human. The Sabbath is a very certain, definite thing. It is a state of mind that man enters or acquires when he goes into the silence of his own soul into the realm of spirit. I'm coming with a word today. I hope we hear it. I hope we hear it. The book, let me go back. The book said the whole purpose of the weekdays is the Sabbath. Here it says the Sabbath has nothing to do with the day, with any day of the week. It says the Sabbath is a very certain, definite thing. It is a state of mind that man enters or acquires when he goes into the silence of his own soul, into the realm of spirit. There he finds true rest and peace. The seventh day means the seventh or perfect stage of one's spiritual unfoldment. Everything that you're doing, baby, 
all that you find your hands doing, all these circumstances, situations, relationships, acquaintances, instances, happenings, all of these different things, the whole purpose of it is your spiritual unfoldment. All of it. When you attach to it, and you so so you caught up on oh, my supervisor get on my nerves. And these children drive me crazy. And this bills all do and all this and this and that and this and that and that and forth and this and that and this and that. When you're absorbed in it, you're unable to see the purpose. When you are absorbed into these fleeting things, these things that are perishable, these people that are perishable, this world that is what we can see as perishable, these things that we see, these physical formed things are perishable. So when you're caught up in them, it's going to feel hellish. You're not gonna be able to figure it all out. I, you can take a billion seminars, you can sign up for the person who done got a level of success that you perceive to be success. And so they can tell you all the secrets and all these different types of things. And it may get you somewhere. But I'm going to tell you, it's not going to get you where this, what they're describing, Sabbath gets you. That silence entrance into the soul. Communion with spirit. The cleansing of the mind, the, 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 the lightening of the heart, the lowering of that self, that perceived self, lowering it. When you lower that, you're able to be raised up. We are children of this world until we realize that we're children of God. And children of this world are tormented, traumatized stressed, diseased, anxious, full of passion, full of yearning, full of wanting, full of desire, chasing, seeking, running after, forcing, fighting, trying to fix. Suffering, suffering with heavy hearts, taxed bodies, hardened emotions that harden in the, the colon and harden in the digestive system and harden in the heart, clogs up the arteries, clogs up the, the uh, uh, puts a film around the, the, the cells. So, okay, you take your supplements, you drink your juices, you eat well, you drink. That's wonderful. But until you realize <laughs> that it's an inner communion that has to happen. It's an inner cleansing, an inner purifying, an inner remembrance, an inner entrance that will lead you to the door of restoration and health and wellness and your wealth. It's an inner job, it's an inner thing. Give thanks for this new age that is blatantly reminding us. Take advantage of this age. We all have suffered in ways that no one talks about. We have suffered in our relationships, we have suffered in our quest to be successful and to acquire things and to, we have, we have suffered in our uh, understanding of what it means to be successful, what it means to be good, what it means to be moral, what it means to be this and what it means to be that. And all of these meanings and standards and constructs have been created by things and people that are perishable. Why not cleave to what's eternal? We done seen it. We done been down the road. So how can someone tell us that it is a fantasy world to me if we open our eyes and look, just look. 
What is the fantasy world? Oh, we're living the fantasy world. They say that someone who continued to do the same thing and getting the terrible results, they say that's insanity. If we continue to attach, continue to absorb, continue to forget our divinity, continue to denounce those things of God, continue to not listen to truth, knowledge. Another part in here, it says, it, 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 it says something about the Christian. It says the goal of the Christian life is knowledge. Knowledge, the vision of God, and participation in the life of the Trinity and the reign of being, love. This is the goal of Christian life. Why am I emphasizing that? Okay, majority in the Western world is still Christian. And if you're not Christian, your ancestors were Christian. We don't have to throw it away. We just got to figure out what it really is. The goal of the Christian life is knowledge. The vision of God, being able to see it, understand it. Participation, participation. In the life of the Trinity. And the reign of being. Love. What is love? the acceptance and allowance of things to be as they are because all is God. Come on now. And I'm able to do that because one of my main goals is to know, to get to know truth, to get to know God, to get to know my, to know my being, to get to know what all of this stuff is. It starts with knowledge, knowledge, people, knowledge is power, the self-knowledge and all this stuff. If you're getting your knowledge from the outside, if you're getting your knowledge by seeking outside of yourself, it's limited. Get your knowledge from your living experience because you done sat with yourself and God done been able to show you stuff. You don't be able to see things, pay attention, be aware. Be more focused on awareness. Be more focused on lightheartedness. Why do I cut? emphasize lightheartedness because when we have things on our heart the metaphysical meaning of heart is center of consciousness what you got weighing on your heart right now be honest with yourself be bold enough to acknowledge it what is weighing on your heart well i'll tell you it's not just weighing on your heart as a feeling it's weighing on the center of your consciousness so as that is at the center of your consciousness, guess what? It's going to impact the way you see life, the way you perceive life, the decisions you make, the mindsets you create. All of that is based upon the heart. This is why I say purify the heart. Purify the heart. What you hear me say? Light in the heart. If we don't do nothing else in meditation, if we don't have any other intention in meditation, I'm fine with the intention being when you leave here, you will leave with a light heart. Be light. Be light. Nothing really matters like that. But queen, you don't know my life. I don't. Let me tell you. It ain't nothing you could tell me. It ain't nothing you could tell me to tell you that something matters like that. I'm telling you. With all the love, I say it. With all the empathy, I say it. Because does it come up in my consciousness to begin to try to matter to me things that's happening in my life? Yeah. But we give thanks for moments like this to remind us, detach. Don't absorb. Let the purpose of all of these things that's happening to you, all of the things that you find yourself doing and seeing and having and all of this, let it be for the purpose of God to show you something. Let it be for the purpose of God to show you something. But you can't see it if your mind, not just your eyes, if your mind is focused on the things of this world so much. 
it's okay to want to be well and to focus on wellness. Don't let that be your God. Say an earnest prayer for the most high to lead you and affirm that the most high will lead you to all of the things you need to do and have and take and all of these different things for your wellness. Do it, be obedient, rest assured. That the, 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 the uh, healers that you need, that you that speak it, rest. And then when something show up, give thanks. Don't overanalyze it. Don't worship it. In this age of information, we see it as good. And, you know, knowledge is different than information. Let me be clear about that. This age of information has thrust us into habits of consuming a lot of facts and information, but not allowing stillness and clarity and silence to help us move to mere information to knowledge. And knowledge only comes when you experience. When you experience. Experiences come from giving over. Wisdom comes when you experience, you get the knowledge and you're able to receive it, accept it, give over to it, appreciate it, be grateful for it, be one with it. So you don't have to chase it. You don't have to be obsessed by it. You can appreciate it as being one with you. It's not something separate that I have to worship and make my God. Wellness is one with me. I'm not seeking wellness. I am well. I am allowing the guidance for me to continue to be one with that. I am allowing the space, the, the environment for that to be in my existence. I am, a, I am creating the heart space, the mind space, and the physical space for that to amplify and, and be expressed through me. I am well. I am already well. I am already wealthy. I'm just going to create the inner and outer environment to help that come out of me, be expressed in and in and through me. None of these things come to us. They express themselves through us. It's not something we have to go get. It's not something that has to come to us. It expresses through us. But how does it do that? Why has it been unable to do that? Because of what we have weighing on our hearts, what we have weighing on our minds, and what we find ourselves caught up doing. So I want to read this again. It says, we are in time. We practice the act of life in time knowing that our goal is in eternity, is in divinity, eternity, divinity. The role of contemplative meditation, prayer, remembrance, contemplative, is to remind us that there is in, there is in the world something other than the world. That the goal of human life is beyond the human. Contemplation, remembrance, prayer, meditation, stillness is the goal and meaning of quote unquote work, your doings. Just as Sabbath, the day of rest, the day of remembrance, the day of prayer. They say, don't be doing, on the Sabbath day, you shouldn't be doing nothing. Why? Because you can give you time. But if we go beyond this whole day construct, Sabbath can be experienced every day. Hour on the hour. Some people pray, some people pray several times a day. They're experiencing Sabbath. 
Sabbath can be experienced before you go to bed at night. In the morning time, throughout the day, at lunchtime, after the conversation you just had, after the situation you just deal with, Sabbath. Take a Sabbath. Allow Sabbath. It says, um, just as Sabbath is the goal and meaning of, of weekdays. I wanted to share that today because, you know, we, we come here and we, we fellowship here and we, we close with meditation and we have a good time. But I want to encourage us to be aware. Walk your path in awareness. Settle down, relax, be quiet more, tread lightly, lightly. You know, just don't take stuff so seriously. Relax, breathe, have fun. Spend time in nature, spend time with friends, spend time with family. Like, don't be so caught up. It's like, Come on, let's let's let us be with this newness. Let us be with this newness. Even if your schedule is what we consider to be busy. If you live it from the inside out, it cuz you could still experience this flow that Emerson is speaking in a chat room. This flow, you can experience a flow while you're busy. You gotta know, come on now. Think of my, I want you to just imagine this thing that we call life that I am experiencing. Mama, sister, daughter, business owner, entrepreneur, you know, it's like, come on. <laughs> this, so, I'm not one that's, that will proclaim that I'm not always uh, moving, occupied. But even in your occupation, you can be still aware. That's what makes it all, that's what it's all for. So I'm not saying you got to quit your job, slow down, become a monk. It works. It, it's If you're called to do that, go for it. But this is what life is for. This is why you're led to do certain things. This is why you end up having certain passions. This is why you end up having certain living, uh, certain living conditions that you want to upkeep. You've been inspired to want this and have that. Okay, it's nothing wrong with those things. If you're able to flow with it, but if you can't find your flow in it, it might not be for you. You might be just acquiring these things from a place of ego. Because I just said to my friend uh, the other day, I said, I've been quite occupied lately, but I've been having a whole lot of fun. It's like a child that go to sleep, child, go to sleep, you know? Rest, <laughs> get up, it's gonna, you know, you gonna, we're gonna be there tomorrow again, you know? Heavenly experiences when you live in God. Even in the tough spots, I'm going to share a testimony. You know, we've been, you know, we have market day here on, on every other Saturday. The next one is July 29th, next Saturday. And, um, you know, the market manager, I meet with her and we were talking and everything. And we talked about some needs, you know, some things that could really make the job easier, help her to move faster and do different things. And I said, okay, just write down the list. Just put it on the list. I said, what we're not going to do is just keep making do. We have to acknowledge what it is that we need so that we can attain it. And I was telling her to just do it so that we can have it on the radar so that they can, you know, we can acquire it in whatever way, shape, form that the most high creates. And that's the attitude I take in doing things. It's like, Okay, let's figure out how we need to do to do it in flow, in excellence, in peace and joy and happiness and fruitfulness. Like we got okay, but don't be limited by oh well, maybe that's expensive or may, uh uh. What is it that we need in order to do this at God level? Because you make your request known and it is given. Period. 
Okay, I don't know who that's for. That just came out. Get the no how much it's gonna cost. What you need it. What you need. You ain't even saying how you ain't. You don't even know the number. I just wish I made more money. How much money you want to make, ma'am? I just wish I had a bigger house. With okay, how big? <laughs> how many bedrooms you need? How many bathrooms you want? Do you want a garden in the back? Do you want some fountains around that mud? Do you want what is it that you fit that will come out of your being that will express it on God level? We stifle it because we scare. Lord, help us to realize what we are as children of the all. The Almighty. We just say that to be just what we saying it for. The Almighty. Anyway, I I was about to go on a whole nother. All right, come on, reel it in, Queen. Finish the story. Okay, so she made the list. I said, put everything on the list. Put all of it. I wanted every little thing. You need rubber bands. You need tie. What you need? Put it on the list. I had that meeting Thursday night with the market manager. This lady had been calling me last week, this week. And every time she called me, I was occupied. So I said, she, when she told me who, where she from, I said, I'm, I, I feel like I'm very interested in what you're talking about, but I just can't listen to you right now. I can't talk to you right now. So can you call me around one o'clock on Friday? Can you call me around that time on Friday? She calls, I'm on the phone with the farmer talking about the market. The sister calls. Well, this sister is a part of an organization that has a grant to help out local farms and gardens to be able to have the capacity to put their produce in local stores. But what they're finding is there's these financial or resource disparities that are making it difficult for uh, producers to get the that which is produced <laughs> to consumers. <laughs> There's this, this uh, need there that need to be fulfilled. And she has the resources to help with that need. So she says, well, this is what we do. And we're helping people to establish different relationships with local stores. And we, we have three that we would like for you to, you know, become connected with and this and that. So if you know of anything you need, that will help you out. Now listen, God, so I mean, did nobody ask you to jump in as God. What you're assigned to do is to create the inner atmosphere for the almighty to express itself through you and your territory. This sister is a part of the territory. The stream of vibration that's extending from the heart. That's connected to other hearts because of the same vibration. And those hearts are connected to resources, to things, to people. Come on, somebody. Get your heart light. Stop absorbing. Just observe. Oh, let's observe. Absor observe the needs. Observe the things that's, you know, just observe. Then acknowledge them. See it for what it is. Then what it say to Simon is watch and pray. <laughs> what does prayer mean? <laughs> Remember, proclaim, affirm. That's all you got to do. Watch and pray. Don't get frustrated. I could say, man, oh, we got so much to do. Let me get to check my bank account. And let me check this. And let me check that. And uh, oh, Lord. And oh, maybe we shouldn't have a market. Maybe we should only make it one. Maybe I shouldn't even be growing no food. Maybe this is too much. Don't, don't we do it? Don't we do it? You can't think about it too much. Be in the fantasy world. Dang, it, dang on it. Be in the fantasy world. Because when you go into reality, I don't know, something happened. <laughs> Start getting worried, stress, life in the mess. You just, you can't see nothing to be grateful for. Oh, Lord, you know. 
Lord, I tell you. All right, y'all. That's the word. I done went past the time per usual. Lord, help me. <laughs> I got to get it to 12 o'clock. I'm supposed to be opening the stove. <laughs> get it together, sis. Turn the open signs on. Lord of mercy. They're going to have to just be all right. Maybe I should just shift the time, the open time. No, nah, let me stop. Because then we'll be on here to two o'clock. Lord, no, no, no. Lord, give thanks for the word. Mm. Give thanks for the word. Erica said, hello, I like it here. Listen, okay. I pray, I really do pray that we hear that which is being channeled to us on Sundays here in these sessions. I really pray that we hear it and it, and it resonates with our hearts. And that we can receive it. And that we're, even if we can't really totally like give over to it, I understand. Even if we can't totally give over to it, it's okay. Be earnest in your desire, you know, be earnest in your want, the want for it until it becomes a want no more, until it becomes a seeking no more, until you, you, you lose the title of seeker. You know, it's okay. You know, put it in your prayers. If you struggle with control, pray on that thing. Pray on it. If you struggle with stressing and being anxious, pray on that thing. Pray on it. And praying ain't begging. Let me tell you something now. You better learn about them people in the Bible. I'm, I'm Bible-based. I mean, I, I, dip in, I dip in the Quran, but I vibe with the Bible. I'm just saying, so whatever book you vibe on, dip into that thing and find the stories that you can remind yourself of, of the faith, the trust, the resilience, the courage. That's what these things are here for. Be reminded, okay? So when you pray, it ain't no begging, baby. It's not begging. It's reminding, I am, I am one with the almighty. That's start your prayer with it. <laughs> I am one with the almighty. How grateful I am of this reality. How grateful I am with this reality. May my heart be light. May, my, may nothing be planted in my consciousness that's not divine in nature. May my consciousness reside in the space of divinity. May I see everything from a divine standpoint. May I be unbothered. May I be unbothered. You better beef up your prayers. Oh, Lord, you help me. Look. What you mean? What do you mean? The presence of God is in you and it is expressing itself through you as you. Let it express itself. I say, give thanks. All right, <laughs> let's do some meditation because I'm riling back up. So let me calm myself down. Let me hit some sage or something. I need to drink some water, Lord, girl. Because you is real Baptist in this morning. <laughs> you is real Baptist church this morning. Lord help us. All right, y'all ready for some meditation? Y'all want some meditation? <laughs> It's funny, sis, that you mentioned the lotus because I used I, I was looking at lotuses this morning. I was just reflecting on the image. <laughs> give thanks, give thanks. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Okay, I wish I could do that little sound. Okay, I don't know how to do it. Let's do some meditation here, though. <laughs> I'm taking off the preacher hat. We're gonna go into the meditation. I say, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks for those who came before us who did sessions just like this. I think of Ike, Reverend Ike. He would be going all the way in in his golden wall church. And then he'll hit him with a meditation. Now let's meditate on it. <laughs> I love it. Now let's meditate. <laughs> and then he affirm. He said, now affirm. He didn't say, say it with your chest, but basically he was saying, say it with your chest, affirm. I am of good courage. I am strong and of good courage. I shake. All right, all right. Let's settle in for a little bit of meditation so that we can close. <clears throat> you don't have to see me. All you need to do is hear me. So get yourself in a comfortable position. And as you move into the meditation space, 
just start to slow the breath down. Relax the body. Relax. We give thanks for the word this morning. We give thanks for the fire of the word. We are allowing that fire to reside in our hearts so that we can be in a place of stillness and knowing and courage and confidence, a quiet one, a silent one, a still one, one that smolders in our hearts. We don't feel the need to have to project or force. It just is. We allow it to let it be. So let's just start by connecting with our breath, allowing the inhale to inhale deeply through the nose, slow, deep breaths, exhale through the mouth. If you can stay for the rest of the session until we close, deep breath in through the nose, slow the breath down. Exhale through the mouth or nose, whichever one is comfortable for you but slowly exhale, inhaling slowly, exhaling slowly, relaxing the body, relax the shoulders, the arms, relax. Move away from thought for the moment. Release all tension, release all attachment. Just focusing on the breath. Allowing the body, the heart, the mind to relax. Relaxation in this sense is a spiritual act. It is a preparation to enter the temple. It is your sacrifice that you make in order to enter the sacred. Sacrifice the thoughts, the goals, the labels, the roles, and just be still with the body, with the breath in a relaxed state. Having no need to stress, no need to worry. Just engage in a breath. In appreciation for the body and for your presence, for your ability to participate in this divine experience. Allow each inhale and exhale to release thoughts of anxieties, feelings of anxiety tendencies of control and attachment. Allow the breath to release it. Do this now and do this in your life. As you're going about life, when you feel the triggers, breathe, relax. Remind yourself, be strong, sis. Be strong, bruh, and of good courage. The Almighty is, has always been, and forever will be. And anything you put after that be, it becomes. The Almighty is, has always been, and forever will be peace, grace when needed. Mercy when needed. Support when needed. Protection when needed. The Almighty is, has always been, and forever will be. As you continue through life, breathing, relaxing. Remember that all is God. The reality of God is the thread 
that flows through everything in this living experience. Things that you see and things in the unseen. All of it is God. And God is infinite potential, divine intelligence. So even if your mind cannot conceive and your eyes do not see and you don't hear, know that divine intelligence <laughs> is at work. The presence of God is in you and all around you. And it's forever on the job and knows no failure. And it's anxious about you. So be at ease, relax. Look for God in your everyday walk. Be with God. Commune with that presence on the inside, that inner peace. Allow God. Allow it. As we get ready to close, take one last deep breath in through the nose. When you're ready to inhale, deep as you can go. Hold that breath as long as you can. And when you're ready, release and relax. Thanks for the meditation. I usually co close with a passage from Baba Muji, but I'm going to close by reading the passage from the book that I referenced today again. It says, we are in time. We practice the act of life in time, knowing that our goal is in eternity. The role of the contemplative, the prayerful, the meditative, the affirmative is to remind us that there is in the world something other than the world and that the goal of human life is beyond the human. Contemplation, prayer, meditation, remembrance is the goal and meaning of our work just as Sabbath is the goal and meaning of the weekdays. May this week be full for you. May it be full of peace, joy, allowance, rest, surrender. So whatever you face this week, I pray that you allow yourself to have the inner and outer atmosphere to allow God to show you itself. And you will be able to experience a joy and a peace that is unmatched. It's unmatched. God level, that's what we want. God level, we give thanks. I say, I say, give thanks. Give thanks for the word today. I pray that it has been impactful and powerful for you. I pray that it has been encouraging to you. I pray that it has stirred something up that needed to be stirred. I give thanks. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. If you'd like to share some love with OU Ministries, you may do so at the same link that you tuned in. You may go to that link and show your love. It's three different places where you can show it on that link, that same link. 
OUMinistries.com, Sunday Fellowship. You have a place where you can give your love offerings. I give thanks for you showing your love, for you giving, you, you connecting your currency with that which you are fed with in this ministry. When you connect that currency, guess what? It becomes a flow of your current. It creates in that way. So I give thanks for those love offerings, not only for the support it gives to OU Ministries, but also for the commitment it shows for you, the giving over it shows for you. We do that when we connect our currency with those things that we find that feed us. When you connect your currency through whether it's financial or through whatever it may be, your prayers, your thoughts, your support, your physical support, your financial support, all of those things, that which you support is going to be what amplifies and grows in your life. Remember that. Remember that. That which you find yourself connecting your currency with is what you're going to find amplifying and growing in your life. I'm telling you, your currency is your energy, your money, your thoughts your words, your prayers, that's your currency. That's your current, okay? Your current, your flow. And so when you uh, show the love to OU Ministries, please know that that love uh, is not uh, unnoticed and is not appreciated. Give thanks so much. If you heard, if you think someone else should hear this session, when once this is posted on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, Go ahead and hit that share button and get that link. Send it to a person who needed to hear this message. If you are um, watching it live today, it's going to be on YouTube. So you can go over to YouTube. Hey, you need to listen. I think you would love this. Send it. And also, if you feel that someone should be on here live, if someone should be hopping on here on Sundays, send the link to the website, OUMinistries.com, Sunday Fellowship, and let them know, hey, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time every Sunday, this is what we vibe, except the last Sunday. <laughs> this is what we vibe. Uh, and it's a it's a good time. It's a good preparation for your week. Um, I bear witness to it myself. So I'm, I'm pretty positive that many of you feel that same way, that this is a great start to the week, get you squared, get you in the heart space, Get you to lighten that heart and get yourself ready for the journey, okay? So we give thanks. Thank you so much for joining me this Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and keep your girl in your prayers, okay? I say. <laughs>